In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a very simple iPhone app with web connectivity. Your app will have a label and a button and will connect to the internet in order to get the current time. The time returned will be the server time, so it depends on the location of your server and not your own location. So when you see that's this difference, that's why. I'm presently in the Pacific time zone, so my phone says this time, but the time returned is from the server in a mountain time zone, so it's off by an hour. The point isn't to get the correct time, but to read a value off the web. So I wanted to make it a dynamic value. Here's the page in the browser that gives us this time. It's on the ios7developer.com site and it's just getdate.php. And every time I refresh the browser, I'll get a new time. It's presently 8.51 in that time zone, 8.51 and 47 seconds, 8.51 and 50 seconds, etc. To take a look at the code that makes this work, it's just as simple as this. It's just some PHP code where I say echo date and use this date format. And that's what gives us the date fully spelled out like this. So now let's take a look at how would we create this iPhone application and how would we um, connect it to the web in order to get this data. So we start as before by creating a new Xcode project. And in the new project dialog, we'll create a single view application. And I'm gonna call it web two press next. I'm just going to put it on my desktop and I have the application created for me, the boilerplate single view application created for me. So I'm going to open the storyboard and on the storyboard I'm going to add a label. And I'm going to add a button. just going to make the label a little bit bigger so it should be able to store the entire text of the server time and just make sure that it's centered by using the blue guideline and I'll make sure my button is centered too. I'll set up some basic properties so the button I'll just say get server time. I realize that that's too big so I can resize my button and just make sure that it's centered and I'll say something like, you know, server time here or something like that. So now I've placed my label and I've placed my button and I need to hook them up so that I can use them in code. So the first, the best way that I can do this is if I select this icon and then I'm gonna close down the properties window. And here we'll see that now I have my code window but it's the .m file and what I wanna do is go to the .h file resize my window so that things are a little bit more usable. So what I'm going to do is if I control drag from my label to the .h file, I can create an outlet for that label. And I'm just going to call it time label like that. And now we'll see the property time label is created for me. When you do this in interface builder, though, one thing to be aware of is that when I want to address it in code, I'm not going to use time label. I'm actually going to use underscore time label. This is just stuff that's done under the hood for you by Xcode. And then for my button, I want to create an action. So I drag and drop it, and I'm going to say, I want this to be an action. And I'm going to call the action get server time. And this action will occur upon the touch up inside event. And I'm going to connect that. So now I'm done with uh, creating my IV outlets, and I'm, I'm done with creating my IV actions. In this case, Pressing the button is going to cause an action, which, call, which calls this function, get server time. Get server time is going to connect to the web, get the data, and then that data needs to update the label. So I need an outlet for the label, and I'm just going to call that outlet time label. So let's go into the M file now, which is the implementation file with the code, and we'll see that the stub of the get server time function has been created for me. So now here's where we're gonna start doing a bit of coding and we're gonna be using a lot of the NS type classes that you see a lot of in um, iPhone and iPad and general Objective-C development. So the first of these is the NS string. And the NS string, as its name suggests, contains a string. So I'm gonna say server address equals the address of the web page that is giving us the data, which is, whoops, HTTP colon slash slash iOS 7 developer.com slash get date dot PHP. If you remember, that was the one that we showed earlier on in the browser. And if you notice that as soon as I finished typing that, this little warning came up. This warning comes up because I've created this variable called server address, but I'm not actually using it. 
it's just a little hint that Xcode gives you so that you don't end up um, wasting memory and wasting uh, space within your application. So if it finds any variables that you don't use, it just wants to warn you about them. So my server address is a string, but what I'm going to call isn't a string. What I'm going to call is a URL. It's a universal resource locator. And the string defines what the URL is, but the string itself isn't the URL. And the URL is stored in an NSURL type. So I'm going to say NSURL. I'll call it server URL. So I'm going to, the string obviously is defining what that address is going to be. So I can in, initiate my um, URL or allocate my URL with the alloc keyword and tell it that, hey, this is in the string. But one of the things about using the internet is that the internet's actually a pretty old technology, so types of strings may not always work and you have to encode them in a specific way if you're using characters within those strings. So like characters like the slash has to be encoded so that the server can understand it. So I you know, init my URL using my string, so I'm going to say init with the string server address. And then I have to specify the type of encoding that I'm going to be using on that. So actually, this isn't good enough. Oops. It isn't good enough for me just to initialize it with this. I have to actually encode it. And it's a common mistake that's made when actually building web-based applications. So I'm going to initialize it with not the server address string, but the encoded server address string. So I'm opening another bracket here, and I'm going to say server address, and then convert that by using string by adding. Now here we can see my encoding, so I'm going to add a string by adding percent escapes using encoding. So I'm just going to tab to get all of that, and then the encoding type is called ASCII. So we'll see that this takes a parameter called ASCII string encoding. That's a bit of a mouthful. So let's take a look at what's really going on there. I'm going to make the window a little wider by hiding the um, header window so we can see it all in one line. So I'm allocating a URL or an NS URL type and I'm initializing that with a string. The string that I'm going to initialize it with is this. So it's not the server address, but it's the server address creating, being used to create a new string by adding percent escapes using this encoding, and the encoding type is NS ASCII string encoding. So now my URL is created using a string, but it's a properly encoded string for the web. So now that I have a URL, the next thing that I do is I make a request off of the web server, and I do that using an NS URL request. request. I'm gonna call that, uh, I'll just call it the request. And so in a similar way, I'm going to allocate a new NS URL request. And what am I going to allocate it with? I'm going to allocate it to initialize it using the URL that we've just created. So in it with URL, and we'll see server URL is the one that I want to initialize it with. Whoops, like so. So now whenever I make a request, there's two things come back from the request. There's a response and there's an error or a potential error. So the response is going to be stored in an NS URL response object. I'm just going to call that response. and I'm going to initialize it to empty, nil. Now potentially an error comes back as well. So I just have to allocate some space for that error and allocate an object that I can use for that error. And I'm just going to call that nil also. So now I've, I have the address of my server in a string. I've used that to create a URL object. That URL object is used to initiate a URL request. So now all I have to do is send that request and get the data back. And the data can be done using an NS data. I'm just going to call that data. And what I do is my NS URL connection that I had created earlier on. Sorry, an NS URL connection is a new object that I'm going to send a synchronous request to. Now, there's two ways you can make a request of the web. The synchronous, where the thread waits until the response comes back. So we end up getting locked on this line until the response from the server comes back. And that's okay if it's a small response, like in this case, the time. Or there's also an asynchronous request, which is like a fire and forget, where we send a request to the server, and then we go on with processing. 
And when the server's finished its job and sends the data back, a callback gets set up on the iOS application, which can be then used to update things. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it very simple with a synchronous request. And the synchronous request was, of course, the request that we created earlier on. And you see there's two more parameters. There's the returning response and there's the potential error. So we see the NSURL response, it actually there's a star auto-releasing star here, an error is an NS error star auto-releasing star. What that really means is that we it's asking for a reference to the response, uh, the NSURL response object, and a reference to the NS error object. So instead of passing the whole object into the NSURL connection, we just have to tell it, here's the address of where we want the response to go, and here's the address of where we want the error to go. And you specify the address using an ampersand. So I tell it ampersand response, just put it in there. And if there's an error, to put it at ampersand error, because we're just passing the address. Then finally, um, the data has come back, but a label takes a string and not a data object. So I can create what's called an NS mutable string. Now there's two types of strings. There's an NS mutable string and there's an NS string. An NS string is static. It's something that you create for something that you're never going to change. So in this case, earlier on, we see server address was a static string that I'm not changing. So I just use an NS string. An NS mutable string object is very similar, but it allows you to change it. It takes a little bit more memory. So if you're ever, if you want to be really optimal in building your applications, you know, create your static strings as NS strings and create anything that needs to be changed as an NS mutable string. And by definition, we're going to be creating this off of a, a dynamic object, which has just come back in its data that can change all the time. So we're going to use an NS mutable string for it. And again, we use the alloc functionality. So I'm going to say NS mutable string. And I'm going to allocate that. And I'm going to have to in initialize that with something. So I'm going to initialize it with the data that we just got back. So if I say init and I scroll down, we see there's like all these different things that I can initialize it. So I'm going to say init with data. And what data is it going to be? Of course, it's data. And the final thing is I have to just tell it what encoding I'm going to be using. And typically in an iPhone app, you're going to use a UTF encoding, which allows you to have international characters. It's more modern than ASCII, that kind of thing. And the default one would be just UTF-8 string encoding. And I'll put a little semicolon there. And now that I have it in my... Um, I've connected to the web, I've gotten the data, I've downloaded the data, I've put it into a string. All I have to do is then put it onto my time label. I'm going to say time label.txt equals server time. Now, do you see the deliberate error? Okay, and I just want to show this nice little thing in Xcode that I put a deliberate error in here and suddenly Xcode gave me this little red warning that said, wait a minute, there's a problem. I'm using this undeclared identifier time label and it's smart enough to say, I think you actually mean underscore time label. So if I double click on this, it will actually fix the code for me. You saw the little yellow blob came up to say, I've changed this, I've fixed it, and now my code is complete. So if I run my application, I can now see the application is running, the label says server time here, the button says get server time, and when I press the button, the server time is returned. And that's it, it's as simple as that. So in this tutorial, you saw you know, a very simple example of connecting to the web. You saw the code that we would use to connect to the web. You put your address into a string. You use that to create a URL. That URL is then used to create a request. The request is made synchronously using a URL connection. Uh, the data that comes back from that is put into an NS data. That was converted into a string. And then that string was used to set the text of the label so that we could update the label. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.